thank you very much. Sorry it was so loud. <laughs> I didn't have time to adjust the... What? What? <laughs> Let's see, this is a show about Les Paul. I, I can't play like Les Paul at all. <laughs> so I won't even try. But uh, he was a big influence on me anyway. If nothing else, he played up uh, way up in the stratosphere. And that made all of, <laughs> that's kind of an approximation. But what he did is he made all the rock and rollers, they all followed his lead on those two notes and they'd go. sick to death of that so I said well I'm not going to do that I'm going to go down to bass, bass strings and go yeah. and that's how I came up with my sound and uh, low those many years ago now I was one of the fortunate people in this business to get to know Les Paul and I got to spend uh, an afternoon with him at his house in Mawa, New Jersey. Funny name, but a beautiful place. And a beautiful home, and he had a studio downstairs. And in his studio, he had everything he'd ever done, ever made. Pictures, they had the plank, which was his first attempt to make electric guitar. The log, he had that, which was quite famous. And... Uh, and uh, I was walking by this mic, which was shaped like a coffee can, and it said RCA on it. And he said, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, well, that's not what he said. He said, uh, he, he looked at, he saw me looking at it, he said, that's the mic that Mary sang Mockingbird Hill into. And I just went, whoa, I got chills, you know. And, uh, so that's the kind of afternoon it was. We took some pictures. Annie Leibovitz was there with her camera for taking pictures of the two of us for Vanity Fair and a music article of some sort. And uh, one time he he loved to kid with people. He said, let's swap guitars, see if they notice. <laughs> so he hands me his gold top Les Paul and I hand him this. and. He puts it on, I put it on, and we were laughed at each other. We, he says, you look funny in that. And I said, well, you look funny in that. And he said, uh, think, they, think they'll notice? And, uh, and I couldn't help but think, here I am in Les Paul's home, his studio, with the Les Paul guitar on. Les Paul's Les Paul guitar. <laughs> and uh, that, was, that was a thrill. And uh, finally somebody, one of Annie's people said, are you guys got the right guitars on? And he just totally cracked up. He thought that was wonderful. But he told me one more story and then I'll get to the next song. Because uh, we're all already over time. But uh, he told me how he came to do the multi-track. And uh, he said, uh, you know, in those days he played guitar for Ben Crosby. And Mary sang backup for Bing Crosby. And they'd go on the road with him. And uh, then Bing started doing this variety show on NBC or something with for Kraft Cheese as a sponsor. He says every other week or so he'd drive out to the house and he'd say, Come on down to the car, Les, I got something for you. And he'd open a trunk and he said it'd be full of cheese. <laughs> So he said we'd load up and we'd carry up to the house and we'd have cheese for the next two weeks, you know, I mean, for enough for the next month. And uh, he said one time he did that, come up, and he says, I'm walking down to the car, I says, and uh, he said, I'm thinking, oh, man, more cheese, <laughs> you know. And he got to the car and Bing says, I know you've been wanting one of these. And he opened the trunk and there was an Ampex tape recorder. Uh, Les had been drooling over, he'd read about him, but he had never seen him. 
and his son was standing there when Aunt Melissa was telling me the story, Russ Paul. And Russ says, yeah, it took Dad about three weeks to put some extra heads on that machine. <laughs> and, that's, and that's how it all started, because he would uh, experiment on the road. He said, we cut several of those records in hotel rooms, which has nothing to do with me, but <laughs> or my music, but... Uh, we're going to play another song for you anyway. This is, this is called 40 Miles of Bad Road. <laughs> 